The vice president has touted the government for fraud promises in the agri sector. Out of 44 promises made, the government says 17 have been fulfilled. Let's listen. The recent growth performance has been driven by industry and agri sectors, and agri particularly reflecting the effect of the policy interventions in the sector, most notably the planting for food and jobs. This has resulted in an increase in agri sector output from 2.9% in 2016 to 6.8% in 2018 and a projected 6.4% in 2019. Industry growth has increased from 4.3% in 2016 to 15.7% in 2017, 10.6% in 2018, and a projected 8.8% in 2019. And the growth in the service sector has almost doubled from 2.8% in 2016 to 5.4% in 2019. So quite clearly, ladies and gentlemen, when you look at the real sector, we promise that we will move the economy from taxation to production, and the real sector you will definitely see. We have reduced the taxes, and we have seen production going up with the interventions we are making in agriculture and industry, and it is good economic management. Let's now take a look at some of the delivered promises that government says it has made in the agri sector. And these include the revived Grains Development Board, established a Ghana Commodity Exchange, improved fertilizer distribution, and expanded the local processing of cocoa. These are some of the promises that government says it has delivered upon. Also, it has expanded the local processing of cocoa, increased subsidies on retail prices of seeds, fertilizer, and other agrochemicals and also it says it has had discussions with Burkina Faso for a more controlled spillage of the Bagrade Dam as well as supporting selected products with storage, transportation, marketing and distribution. Let's now speak to Charles Nyaba. He is the programs officer at the Peasant Farmers Association of Ghana. Charles, thank you so much for your time. Now, government says it has delivered. What has been its impact on the people? Um, good afternoon, Portia. Um, yeah, I just listen to the areas we said government said it's uh, promised to do and what they've been able to deliver. I've not done detailed assessment of what they said they were going to do and what they've been able to do. But just following what you said, um, if I should comment on the those areas, I should say that for fertilizer subsidy, um, for the period 2017, 2018, 2019, there were 50% subsidy on fertilizer. Uh, that was a policy. Uh, there was also subsidy on seas, so that is something which is uh, commendable. Uh, the other issues uh, that uh, we as farmers may be interested in is that it's not only the subsidy policy that is put down, it's about whether the farmers are able to assess those inputs or not. Now, uh, in terms of uh, Establishment of uh, Ghana, yes, that has been done. The exchange is there, the secretary is there. But we would have been interested in looking whether Ghana Commodity Exchange are doing their work in terms of buying, in terms of providing storage, as they promised to do, in terms of allowing farmers to put their produce there and using it as a guarantee for access and credit. That has not been done. Um, the other area that we were more interested in has to do with the issue of uh, warehousing, uh, which was meant to address for service losses. Mm -hmm. Because we always said that um, the major problem facing most small scale farmers in South Africa, not only Ghana, has to do with the amount of produce that get lost after production. All right. Because it, it, doesn't, it, doesn't, it doesn't help the farmer. So, if you Charles, would, would you say that at the end of the day, they'll have about thirty percent losses or forty percent losses, and so that is the situation on the ground.
Charles, so, would you say that so the eighty-nine percent? Charles, can you hear me? We actually need to uh, do further assessment on the outcome. Now, Charles, government has given itself a score of eighty-nine percent. Would you say this is a true reflection of what is currently happening in the agri sector? Uh, that I will. Uh, um, uh, serious issues with that score, uh, but one may not be able to debate it. You need to actually understand government's own methodology in giving that score. If the aim was only to start the project, for instance, your aim is to establish a kind of community not to look at what Ghana community has at the establishment, the impact it will have on farming. That's a different discussion altogether. Uh, in terms of uh, fertilizer, the fertilizer were there, the seeds were there. Farmers, we all know what happened in 2019. Most of the fertilizer was smoked. Within the period that the farmers need the fertilizer, uh, it wasn't available for most farmers. So these are issues that we need to look at. So, and the agriculture sector is also broad. Because it comprises of crops, it comprises of livestock, it comprises of forestry, it comprises of uh, fishes. So we need to look further into those various variables. What were the baseline? What progress have we been able to make in those areas? For now, I haven't done assessment on that, and it will be unfair on the part of a uh, government for me to start commenting and uh, disputing what they said. I need to look at what was the baseline, what is the current status that merit giving the overall score of 89. So I will plead with you to give me more time to do proper assessment of the various variables to be able to comment this uh, in a few days to come. All right, thank you very much for your time. And Charles Nyaba as the Programs Officer of the Ghana Peasant Farmers Association of Ghana. Still on the agri sector, Edward Kawe is the General Secretary of the General Agricultural Workers. You know, thank you so much for your time, Mr. Kawe. So, first of all, government says it has delivered upon its promises. For example, there's been increase in subsidies on retail prices of seeds, fertilizers, and other agrochemicals. You are with the General Agricultural Workers Union. What do you make of these um, eight, this 89 percent score that government says it, is, it has given itself? Well, let me say good afternoon to you and good afternoon to the team farmers of this country. Um, what we heard from government are statistics, and statistics are supposed to be verified on the ground. Um, we have to match the statistics with what is on the ground. Now, the statistics about increasing fertilizer distribution uh, could be correct, but then what is what amount of the fertilizer actually reaches the farmer. We are all aware that there have been some challenges with the fertilizer distribution in this country, where much of uh, some of it has been smuggled out. In 2018, government own statistics indicated that up to $12 million worth of fertilizer was smuggled out of this country. And uh, if that is anything to go by, then of course, yes, much fertilizer might have actually allocated, but much of it has actually not reached the farmers. So it's, um, I was also thinking that it would be important for the people who are the beneficiaries of government policy to be able to assess government rather than government assessing itself. Mm. But as they've gone ahead to assess themselves, it is very difficult for me to say that, yes, uh, the pass mark or the percentage that I've given to themselves is accurate or is not accurate because uh, it's very difficult to actually verify this. So with the promises that government says it has delivered upon, for example, it says with the planting for food and jobs program, we are now exporting maize and cassava to countries such as Burkina Faso. But what actually do the farmers need? Well, if you look at the, the agriculture encompasses a gamut of uh, areas, sub-sectors within the agriculture sector. Now, today, if you take 
tomato production in this country. If you, we used to have the Navongo tomatoes, which uh, is the best type of tomatoes if you go to the market. Today, all tomatoes is imported from Burkina Faso. If you go to Navrongo now, if you go to uh, those areas, uh, you find out that farmers have virtually run away from uh, producing tomatoes because there is no market here for, for, for it. So if in one area uh, you think you have increased cassava production and because cassava has, is now having a market, it has always been exported. Cassava, yam, and maize, and the rest, almost everything we produce in Ghana has ever been exported. But the challenge we always have is sustaining production levels and ensuring that all the time there is this uh, cassava and there is maize uh, to our economy and then to, serve, to service the farmers that need it and the people of this country. So again, it, it is too quick to think that if a particular season there has been a glut uh, of a particular produce and therefore you export it to a, a, a neighboring country, it therefore means that it's going to be like that subsequently. We just need to be very careful when we begin to say that, look, we have, we have delivered, we have come to, uh, we have arrived, we are now exporting, so we are okay. It is not actually like that. But again, you can go to the ground and find out about the prices. Sometimes the prices will be able to tell us whether we have actually produced as much as we think that we have produced. And that is critical for us to verify the figures. Mm. So what score would you give government then? Well, once I've not been, once I've not been invited to, and then they have assessed themselves, it will be difficult for me now to do. But I hope that uh, uh, in the uh, few days to come, one will be able to say categorically what we think uh, government uh, deserves to be rated. Uh, but certainly, uh, what they have done is uh, giving themselves a mark. And uh, we all know that uh, uh, it's not uh, more objective to award yourself and to uh, clap for yourself. Now, it's to allow the people who benefit from your deeds, from your actions, because government has a responsibility to service the people. Let the people, uh, I mean, uh, honor you and tell you what you are, rather than uh, you yourself. All right, thank you very much for your time. And Mr. Kaiwa is the General Secretary of the General Agriculture Workers Union.